Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to replace the VVTi solenoid on a 2004 Lexus GS300. The process is almost exactly the same for any Toyota or Lexus model with a 2JZ GE VVTi engine. For a full list of compatible vehicle models, have a look at the video description below. One of the most common causes for VVTi solenoids to go bad is neglected oil changes. Old oil contains a lot of debris which can clog up the screen and the plunger and the solenoid, causing it to malfunction. The diagnostic codes that can pop up due to a bad VVTi solenoid are commonly P0016 or P1349. Replacing the VVTi solenoid with a new one is not going to help if oil changes aren't done in a timely manner, as the same issue is going to pop up all over again down the road. So let's get started. As you can see, the VVTi solenoid we're replacing is below the timing belt cover, which in turn is underneath the engine cover. The engine cover is held on by four 10mm nuts. Remove the cover and set it aside. Now you can remove the timing belt cover, which is held in by four 5mm hex bolts. Be careful not to strip them while removing them. Once you remove the timing belt cover, you can see both the exhaust and the intake camshaft pulleys. The intake camshaft pulley is called a VVTi gear, which stands for Variable Valve Timing with Intelligence. As it controls variable timing of the intake camshaft, this gear is free to rotate 30 degrees. The position of this gear and therefore the intake camshaft position at any given time is controlled by the oil pressure supplied by the VVTi solenoid. When this solenoid goes bad, it is not able to supply the required oil pressure correctly. The ECU then notices that there is a discrepancy between the actual and the expected position of the intake camshaft. This is what causes the check engine light to turn on for a bad VVTi solenoid. To remove the old VVTi solenoid, remove the 10mm bolt that's holding it down. Be careful not to drop it into the gap as I did. Remove the electrical connector going to the VVTi solenoid. As you can see, the connector is broken. If you would like to repair the electrical connector, I have a video on my channel which shows how to do that. You can find it linked in the video description below and also in the top right hand corner as you can see. The part number for the electrical connector is as shown. Moving on. Swivel the VVTi solenoid towards you and then pull it out. It should come out pretty easily, especially if it hasn't been changed in a long time. This rubber o-ring on the solenoid becomes hard and shrinks over time, and this causes leaks from the VVTi solenoid. Clean off the area directly under the solenoid with a paper towel. This will make it easier for us to inspect if the new VVTi solenoid is leaking after we install it. Here is the new VVTi solenoid. As you can see, the rubber o-ring is much bigger and should give us a better seal. Slide the VVTi solenoid in and then push it until it snaps into place. This may require a little bit of force, especially since the new o-ring is nice and tight. Snug the 10mm bolt by hand and then tighten it using a ratchet. Be careful not to tighten excessively as you are screwing down into one of the camshaft bearing caps which is made of aluminum. The bearing caps are not very hard and can break if excessive force is applied. Don't forget to reconnect the electrical connector to the solenoid. Clean off the area under the VVTi solenoid if it is dirty. Now we can go ahead and start the car up. We're just going to see if there are any leaks around the VVTi solenoid that we just installed and also make sure that the engine runs nice and smooth. Unfortunately, any check engine lights related to the VVTi solenoid will not pop up immediately on the dash. This is because the ECU uses a method called two-trip logic to diagnose these issues. The way this works is that, if you have any issues with the VVTi solenoid, these issues have to happen on two separate drive trips for the check engine light to pop up. This is done to avoid false reports of variable valve timing issues. So take the car out for a spin a few times and then see if you get any check engine lights. Another few symptoms of a bad VVTi solenoid include your car hesitating while you accelerate or reduce fuel economy. So that brings us to the end of today's video. If you liked it and found it helpful, remember to hit the like and subscribe button down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.